a results conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon. Thank you and over to you sir. Hi everyone, uh, it's a wonderful uh, good morning, good afternoon or good evening uh, depending on the part of the world you are joining this uh, call from. Uh, representing ICA Securities, uh, it's our absolute pleasure to host the management of Zydus Wellness uh, once again for the results conference call, this time the Q1 FI25 results. Uh, the uh, company is represented today uh, you know, by Dr. Shravil Patel, Chairman, Mr. Tarun Arora, CEO, Mr. Ganesh Nayak, Director, Mr. Umesh Parikh, CFO. Over to the management for the opening remarks uh, and the detailing, post which we'll open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Manoj, uh, for the uh, opening remark and opening and uh, sharing the introduction to the people joined in. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the post results teleconference for Zyvis Limits Limited for quarter one financial year 2024 25. And as Manoj has already introduced, we have the management, from the management, Dr. Shavu Patel, Mr. Ganesh Naik, and Manish. During the quarter, uh, demand continued the positive momentum with growth across various categories. Through the demand outpaced urban growth, narrowing the consumption gap. The country also witnessed harsh and prolonged summer, which helped boost the consumption of seasonal products like Yukon and Nice. As a result, the company registered exceptional growth uh, regarding its highest ever sales with a consolidated net sales growth of 20% on a year on year basis, of which 17.1% is due to volume. The personal care segment registered a uh, whooping uh, double-digit growth of 41.8%, thereby continuing its double-digit growth trajectory over the last few quarters. Growth was driven by strong consumer preference for the brands, further boosted by a favorable summer season. At the same time, the food and nutrition segment also registered a good double-digit growth of 15% for the quarter riding on the back of brand Groupon D, while Compline and Sweetness portfolio continue to hold the fort. Neutralized brands showed a single-digit volume growth, however, value growth failed volume uh, due to market-driven prices. The company's research and development capabilities continue to be at the forefront, helping the company to launch new products and extensions, namely, Compliance foray into immunity space with a new launch of Compliance Immunogrow product in select states. They used pink clay and charcoal-infused anti-pollution face wash, rub and face pack. Neutralite professional mayonnaise with tandoori range. Neutralite retail mayonnaise with carrot and cu uh, cucumber sandwich spread. The company launched natural soap in international market introducing four distinct variants, which include uh, aqua mint, neem and aloe, lime and sandal. Beyond these five launches, the company plans to launch four more innovations in the coming quarters. Amidst, uh, amidst the headwind of inflation and commodity prices, the gross margin further it continues to be resilient, showing its upward move, move to move 114 basis points on sequential basis and 314 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis, driven by strong performance of product portfolio, favorable product mix, calibrated price increase taken earlier, and an efficient hedging strategy for key commodities. During the quarter, the company repaid its debt in full, thus deleveraging its balance sheet and yet retaining its strong cash position as at the quarter end. Let me take you through some other highlights of the consolidated financial performance of quarter one of financial year 2024 25 Our net sales grew by 20% to 8,391 million rupees. We reinvested some part of our gross margins expansion to into brand building as a result of which advertisement expenses grew by 19.1% year on year on a lower base of brand investment last financial year. Other expenses grew by 27.7% year on year basis driven up by the cost of strategy consultant to co-create a long term growth plan. Excluding this cost, other expenses grew by 6%. EBITDA grew by 33.3% year-on-year to 1,553 million rupees. Other income net of finance cost has turned positive. 
net profit after tax grew by 33.8 percent to 1,477 million rupees. Adjusted PAT grew by 39.6 percent on a year-on-year -year basis after eliminating exceptional items and one-time deferred tax assets from the comparable quarter of previous year. With that, let me share some of the highlights of the operations for the year gone by, uh, of the quarter gone by, which will also cover category growth, market share numbers as per the mid June 2024 report of Nielsen and IQBO. We maintain the strong focus on marketing initiatives aimed at expanding our categories and enhancing the market share of our brands. On the personal care front, KVU brand continues to outpace category growth and has registered a strong growth. The face scrub category has grown by 14.3% at MAC level. KVU scrub has maintained its leadership position with a market share of 46.2% in the facial scrub category, which is an increase of 373 basis points over the same period last year. The peel off category has grown by 21.1% at MAD level. Every peel off maintained its position, uh, its number one position, with a market share of 78.2% in peel off, which is an increase of 200 basis points over the same period last year. AU brand holds the fifth position with a 6.6% uh, market share in the overall patient cleansing segment level. National brand has witnessed robust growth, favorable summer season, and consistent media visibility. The prickly heat powder category has grown by 20.2% at MAT level. National has maintained its number one position with a market share of 34.9% in the prickly heat powder category. Nicel has recorded a consistent increase in nozzle penetration in line with our strategy of recruiting new consumers. On the Groupon D front, the brand has achieved strong growth propelled by sustained marketing efforts in favorable summer conditions. To amplify market penetration in strategic states, the brand implemented additional micro marketing initiatives. On the digital front, innovative campaigns including, included launching four new digital films targeting specific cohorts. Brand penetration has increased by 160 basis points versus last year as per the MAT May 24 report of Kantar Panel. The glucose powder category has grown by 21.3% at MAT level. Glucon D continues to maintain its leadership position in glucose powder category with a market value market share of 59.7% at MAT level. On the compliant front, the nutrition drink category has continued showing signs of revival across key metrics. Brand penetration has grown by 23 basis points versus last year as per MAT May 24 report of Kantar Kami. The brand is sustained by a TV campaign featuring two popular celebrities, Madhuri and Sneha, highlighting the criticality of protein for growing kids, supported by a comprehensive 360-degree campaign across all regions. The category has grown by 4.3% at MAT level. Compliant market shares stood at 4.3% at MAT level. On the sweetness front, sugar substitute category has grown by 5.8% at MAT level. The sugar free brand maintained its dominant position in the sugar substitute market with a commanding market share of 95.9%. Sugar free green continues to experience strong double digit growth driven by increasing volume uptake. We recently upgraded uh, Sugar Free Gold to Sugar Free Gold Plus with a new formulation, Sucralose Plus Chromium. Chromium contributes to the maintenance of normal blood glucose level, while removing aspartame helps clarify any doubt in consumer's mind. I am like a unique formulation of sugar blended with stevia to offer consumers 50% less calories than regular sugar has gained a positive response in the market in the quarter immediately following its launch. On the new flight front, the brand showed up single digit volume growth, uh, however, value growth failed uh, volume growth due to market driven prices, which is largely a food service phenomenon. The brand has support, was supported by several marketing uh, initiatives, including awareness led digital campaigns and summer digital campaigns. Bachoka uh, failed with Neutralite, aimed at enhancing engagement for a professional range through a, uh, social media. 
considering the expected normal monsoon in most parts of the country, we anticipate stable demand going forward. We intend to support this momentum through brand-led marketing initiatives and strengthen our supply chain capabilities, including the recent implementation of hub and spoke models for the supplies. The company remains committed to ongoing innovations to align with evolving consumer preferences. Better macroeconomic indicators combined with companies' robust operation foundations are poised to support favorable growth prospects for our brands in the upcoming periods. Thank you, and we'll now start the Q&A. Over to the coordinator. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use headsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rishi Kothari from PI Square Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, however, I, I would like to know the uh, future prospects of the current brand that you are into. So, what's the future outlook for us from here on? Uh, what type of growth rate we are looking at? And is there any margin expression that we look at? Because right now, if you see OP margins over the years have gradually decreased for the company. So, are these bottoming up of uh, margins or are we looking at an expansion of margin from here on? Uh, thanks uh, for the question. Uh, I think our uh, revenue growth expectations, uh, like we've uh, said in the past, we continue to focus on a double-digit growth trajectory, and that's what we will, uh, when we uh, is what we emphasize going forward. From a margin, we we do believe that uh, uh, we should be looking at expansion of our EBITDA margins, and uh, like we've also said in our last uh, investor call, we are looking at over the next couple of years. Uh, going back to our 17-18% kind of EBITDA margins uh, through the journey. Largely supported by gross margin improvement, which we've already seen, and some operating leverage with growth. Thank you. Okay, and uh, this expansion of uh, OPM margin, by what uh, time period are we looking at? Because right now we are running at 13-14%. So 17-18% will achieve in what, two, three years time period, or is there any timeline for that? Exactly. I think last couple, next couple of years is what we've talked about. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, my next question is in terms of the KPEX, uh, what KPEX are we planning for FI25? Yeah. Generally, the KPEX is the maintenance line KPEX. And what we have than the depreciation, except the few balancing equipment that we might have to procure. Sorry, I, I, I was not able to get the amount that you said. Uh, any amount? So in the range of 30, 35 crores. Okay, 30 to 35 crores. And uh, this will be purely uh, where it will be deployed? So it's largely a maintenance capex in some capacity uh, uh, expansion equipment that we may need. No large uh, uh, capex that we need. Okay, and this are the... Okay, and this are we planning uh, to deploy uh, to source it from the current uh, cash flows that we have, or is it true we are uh, planning for debt degree? Yeah, I mean, we plan to have the capex for the equipment deployed only through the current cash flow that we have. And we are also planning for the borrowing reduction eventually to go and achieve the debt free company status. Yeah, of course, unless there is some acquisition opportunity in the future. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the answer. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Avendis Park Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, hi team, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a good summer good and then and good uh, overall numbers. Uh, just uh, if you can help uh, uh, to slice and dice the number in terms of summer uh, portfolio and non-summer portfolio and then uh, overall volume and value growth to start with. Uh, hi Tejas, thanks for this. Uh, uh, we don't uh, break it down with summer, non-summer. We, As we've started over the last five quarters, 
we share it with food and nutrition on one side and personal care, uh, personal care which you've shared. Uh, so that's really what it is. But uh, other things, uh, uh, volume, volume we've had a 17.1 percent growth. So out of 20 overall growth, so remaining will be value. No specific price increases right now taken, but uh, it's all price which is already been taken over there. Sure. So the reason to why uh, I asked on summer is we all know that there was a huge uh, tailwind for demand in general for because of the heat wave. So just wanted to know, let's say uh, hypothetically, if next year we don't uh, get this tailwind, uh, how should we think about that? Is there a genuine uh, demand uptick or you believe that irrespective of that, uh, or, or sorry, irrespective of the uh, heat wave, we would have done uh, this well or slightly, uh, let's say, in, in, in uh, ballpark around this number only? So, let me uh, explain. I think uh, clearly this uh, summer is a very important part of our portfolio and this does contribute to the numbers and uh, the numbers won't be the same if the season is not uh, as it was. But over any uh, three to four year period of time, we do expect a consistent three to four, uh, sorry, double digit uh, growth for across the portfolio. Now, if a bad season happens like last year, that can happen, but that doesn't put it put us down too substantially. But we, we believe a double digit growth for the entire portfolio is a on a consistent basis is how we continue to look at from our outlook. Perfect, so very clear. So we also kind of witnessed uh, tailwinds on uh, margin gross margin front. Uh, so was it largely led by commodity deflation, or there was a premiumization also which played a role here? So, so everything else, you're right, there is a bit of commodity support, but there is also in recent months, some of the products, uh, some of the uh, commodity has seen a substantial increase, uh, but we are well equipped for that. So we have taken timely price increases and premiumization across our portfolio. Uh, action across our portfolio where we've act, uh, acted on some premiumization. Uh, Sure. And so you also highlighted in your opening remarks that we reinvested some of these benefits in a and and other expenses, which also has uh, sort of uh, one-off item in terms of some consultancy charges. But employee cost also jumped substantially. So any one-off there, or this was just a, a regular uh, uptake, which which happens every year? I think yes. So employee cost has gone up largely because of uh, uh, two reasons. One is that... Uh, you know, there is an occupancy increase, so it's about one and a half percent occupancy rise. And secondly, you know, the reason is the one of that we are transitioning from the private PF to government based trust, government based PF. And therefore, we have to make good some shortfall there. And therefore, you see a hike of 25 percent, which is not a normal hike. So, Umesh, why should I analyze this number, or this is this quarter run rate is abnormally high to kind of? Bridge for the deficit. It is that we have. a high number, and uh, and we should not dwell into this. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, last one, sir. Uh, so, just wanted to know what percentage of our revenue now comes from e com, uh, uh, quick commerce, and how much, uh, what kind of trajectory of growth or relevance uh, we are seeing in that channel. Okay. Just one second. So typically, the organized trade is one fifth of our business, uh, which includes non-trade and e-commerce. And e-commerce, like we have explained in a presentation, also is e-commerce is overall about nine to ten percent kind of range, nine and a half percent range, and uh, uh, and it is growing at a much faster pace than other channels. But of course, uh, last quarter we've seen uh, a good growth led by uh, across all channels. But in uh, quick commerce is growing portion of the overall e-commerce space, uh, which is how the category is. Fortunately for us, our market shares across uh, e-commerce platforms that we track are also uh, ahead of our general market share. So we are in a good shape to uh, embrace uh, this to the genius. Sure, sure. Very clear, sir. So I'll come back in queue if I have any more questions. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just a reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone now. The next question is from the line of Karan Bhuvania from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, firstly, congratulations on good set of numbers. 
uh, so I have two questions. Firstly, on sugar free, the change in formulation, uh, of, uh, of course, it's good, good for uh, good in the medium term, given that there's a change in formulation, uh, removing aspartame. But do you emphasize any short term impact in terms of uh, consumption because because there's a change in formulation of sugar free gold? Uh, we've done enough consumer tests and we will have to finally play out whatever happens. But uh, we, we expect actually to support uh, consumer uh, recruitment because one of the things, there was a perception issue with aspartame and that's why we shifted to sucralose plus chromium, which uh, chromium is known to help uh, maintain blood uh, glucose levels. So we do in fact some improvement in at least uh, uh, overcome the negative perceptions that may happen. So we don't expect any disruption in any short term medium term on this. Got it. So sugar free should ideally uh, revert back to double D in growth trajectory post this launch. Is, is, that, is that right? Yes, uh, sweeteners we are clearly uh, uh, expecting to remain on a double digit growth trajectory over next week. Got it. Got it. Secondly, sir, uh, I, I see that we have done a few launches over the last few quarters. Uh, and then you also mentioned opening a mark that four new product launches are expected over the coming quarter. So if you could just highlight what is the share of revenue from new product launches and uh, currently and how, how do you see that uh, over the next couple of years? So so the share of new products will be uh, much smaller because they are at early stage. Typically, uh, we look at share of uh, products over 36 months rather than the same year because they start very small. And one of the things we've started doing in last one or two years is also we launch in limited channels first or limited geographies, uh, pilot it, learn it, and then scale it up, uh, which is what we've done in Compline and uh, Unigrow, which we just launched uh, last end of last quarter. Some of these launches will also go like that. So uh, I'm not seeing in the uh, you know, next three to four quarters the numbers jumping up, but they if they go right, we could really build up a much larger scale and our wish list is to go up to 6 to 8 percent of our revenue could come in products from products launched in 36 months. But that's really what will really help us. So it's important to build them right uh, rather than look at only short term share of business item. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Parkeria from Wealth Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, Good evening, sir, and thank you for taking my questions and congratulations on uh, delivering a uh, good set of numbers. After a long time, uh, we are seeing such kind of growth. Uh, and as you alluded to, that uh, while summer is an important element and there is a seasonality, uh, over the longest period of three to four years, we are uh, you know positioned for a double-digit growth and hope uh, that continues. Uh, with that said, uh, sir, uh, just wanted to understand a few specific thing on. Uh, the recent con change in trend in terms of quick commerce, if we look at our products, you know, we'll call them as mass premium. Will that be right in terms of ever use and other products? So with that, do you see quick commerce to be a big tailwind for us uh, in terms of uh, where we are, do you know, in terms of growth and uh, the changing trend which is happening? So quick commerce, uh, which are products very well. Uh, they are regular essential use products, so quick commerce works. But I think it's also being relevant to the consumers as consumers are shifting their purchase behavior across channels and there is an omni-channel world. So a lot of consumers who are buying uh, probably from the neighborhood stores or calling for deliveries are shifting to e-commerce who find uh, good traction with this. So our products are fairly well and uh, we are engaging across quick commerce channels to uh, be relevant uh, and uh, partner better with these channels. So you're not seeing any additional tailwind in that sense of yeah, it is more like an just an expansion on the uh, 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 at the margin in terms of another another channel adding up. Uh, so this tailwind really works, but it's also available to everyone. Uh, so finally, it's the consumer consumption habits which will drive and where they buy from. Uh, because we are well placed with quick commerce, we we definitely think we are better placed and we will gain from it. But eventually, it will be a function of uh, uh, your engagement with them and how this works. Because finally, consumers' consumption habits will drive the larger change at the category level. We being the leader in most of the categories, we are thinking. 
Sir, uh, one question on NICEL. You know, at the overall, or from a little longish perspective, and at an overall category level, telecom powder is uh, you know is a is a slow or you know is a diminishing category in terms of consumer preferences as we see the newer generation and you know what is happening. So while we are doing all that is required in terms of positioning, repositioning, and the brand. innovations and freshness but at a at a very broad level in terms of where the young generation is and when we see telecom powder it is you know uh, any thoughts on that from a uh, from a longish perspective where where is it position and how do you see this uh so yes at if you look at the overall tax level which includes sensorial as well as functional tax uh there is obviously some uh, Uh, loss in consumer o- over a long period of time in the uh, past, where a lot of people have shifted out of sensorial tax to uh, uh, to a newer formats like uh, the deodorants, perfumes, and uh, uh, sprays. Uh, but functional tax has seen a more consistent performance because uh, this is being consumed not just for the fragrancing. But for actual product performance against the key heat cooling, it also tells us one of the best ways to absorb sweat. Uh, in sweat absorption, uh, sprays have not worked in the country. So from a consumer perspective, I think there is still enough uh, opportunity to build on tariffs, especially the prickly heat and cooling tariffs. And uh, at least over the next three to five years, I'm not seeing a big challenge. Having said this, we have also uh, piloted uh, the. Uh, the products with the um, the spray format the what is it called the um, mist uh, spray which uh, has not got uh, i would say a great uh, you know acceptance with the consumers so we still at it we'll keep experimenting and learning with the consumers but that as a format works very well in the uh, you know tropical climate of india where the extreme summer and the perspiration is best absorbed by tiles and with the prickly heat uh, proposition it's a great uh, match to the river schools all right sir oh, oh, sir last question on my side is uh, you know on the margin front you have been uh, saying that we'll move to 17 18% uh, you know over a uh, over a you know two to three years period uh, last two quarters have been uh, you know uh, put together uh, shows that we are on track uh, how do we see the little near term i am not looking for a number but you know uh, what the question is is uh, the the you know are there going to be a negative surprises in terms of uh, margins in terms of the as we go ahead on the fy25 because the summer has helped us the strong tailwind has helped us is are we positioned to continue to deliver in the you know in the next two three quarters alone? It's from a little near-term perspective. Uh, do we are we going to see any? Do you do you see any headwind or any risk on that side? So, uh, so uh, typically quarter two and quarter three are uh, smaller quarters uh, from a revenue point of view. Uh, typically, only one third of our revenue comes from these quarters, and because of the fixed cost impact, there is a deleverage which happens. So, obviously, you will find. Uh, Uh, the bottom line the ebitda numbers or operating margins much lower than quarter 4 quarter 1 uh, therefore on near term if we look at the same level of margin for sure it will not play out uh, but we think at a annualized level we are on the right path where we see this uh, trend to be secular unless some big large deception happens which is out of control we do see that this trend will uh, continue in terms of improving our margin levels and that's why we are uh, Uh, planning for this uh, or hoping to deliver the numbers that we are talking about from my data margin in the next two years thank you sir and wish all the best thank you the next question is on the line of deving shah from dd enterprise please go ahead yeah hi uh, thank you for taking uh, my question uh, i was just uh, like uh, like quarter 1 is uh, a very pretty good quarter and we got a ebitda level margins of around 18% so uh, the recently only i heard on the con call that quarter 2 and quarter 3 that cannot be achievable like they are the sluggish quarters correct i think uh, i won't call them sluggish quarters i typically because we uh, the summer brands have a quarter 4 quarter 1 the jan june uh, Bias because that's how seasons play out, and therefore our revenue has that bias. But I won't call them sluggish quarters. They will typically be lower, and that has a deleverage impact on the overall payment. 
okay and uh, so the uh, other set was like last quarter uh, like in the last one call also we heard that like uh, the price also has been uh, like a price hike was there in some of the products so uh, is it like uh, they got it good uh, appreciated by the market or like the, we have seen that on the basis of the prices the demand has came down or something or the price has been acceptable what accepted sorry so, so uh, simply put uh, we are leaders across categories and we have the pricing power across our brands typically okay. we won't lead with the pricing especially in a hyper inflationary scenario which happened over last couple of years uh, which can lead to also demand drop but now that uh, that extreme high inflation is uh, out of the way i think we are well equipped to a manage with the pricing and given our brand building and constant leadership we are able to also get across to the consumer uh, and that's how we think it will be over the coming quarter as well okay uh, just a uh, small question like this like this quarter 2 and quarter 3 is every year this is like that only going on if i'm not wrong like uh, i've seen that from the last 3 4 years right and after <laughs> taking over the hands also so a quarter 2 and quarter 3 is not our products like our products are basically majorly being accepted in the quarter 4 and quarter 1 like the demand hike is there so quarter 2 and quarter 3 does company has thought any of the thing for out of the box like some of the products or some of the things to add some product to add something in which quarter 2 and 3 like also like some of the products or anything like after taken over hands like is there any plan for the company to just catch up the consistency like so, so there is the seasonality has a long legacy to it uh, for and we are cognizant of quarter 2 quarter 3 opportunity where we can do a lot more but they are not built overnight uh, we do have uh, launched several products like body lotion in uh, every week, which has a bias towards the quarter two, quarter three, but they are still very small. And the, given the scale of Gupandi Nation, it cannot be overcome by just doing that. So we are working across, uh, to even out, but this is a reality of our business. So I think we are at it to uh, do better in the off season, as somebody would call it, in a for against the summer uh, products. But uh, these take a longer period of time, and uh, as long as we know how to manage it, uh, it's fine. It's, we are managing. Oh, oh. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krutika from Sher Khan by BNB Paribas. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity, and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, my first uh, question would be on the demand output. So we are discussing that two, two and three are uh, generally uh, uh, not favorable for the company. But how do you see the demand going ahead in Q3 and Q4 specifically? Are there any uh, specific headwinds that are likely to impact the performance? Or uh, how is the overall demand scenario in the near term? So overall demand scenario, we are only expecting it to get better. Now those. Uh, you know, the tailwinds on uh, summer is out, but that's a separate issue. At the overall demand level, we do expect things to only get better as we have seen over the last couple of quarters. It's only got better. Good monsoon should help us uh, improve the demand scenario. The product mix may change the overall output of the company, but we are still on, uh, I would say, optimistic of uh, how it will play out over the next couple of, the next two to three quarters. Okay, okay. Thank okay, you. Let me grow that. Okay, continue. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, next uh, uh, would be the uh, revenue growth for the current year. So, we are eyeing a uh, uh, double digit growth for the year. So, any specific like in uh, mid teams or, uh, you know, high double digits, any any specific guidance regarding that if you can provide me? No, we, we're not going to be able to do that. Okay, all right, all right. And my last question would be on the effective tax rate for the 25 and 26. So, what are we expecting it to be? So, uh, 24 and 25 and 25 and 26, there won't be any cash outflow as such that we are expecting. Though there could be a deferred liability because we'll be utilizing the accumulated losses. So, there could be a deferred liability, but no actual tax outflow on that front, cash payment. 
Okay, so the effective tax rate would be around uh, the same as last year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Malhar Sangvi from Bodhi Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, congratulations on the good set and in the presentation. In the first slide, you mentioned that rural demand is now outpacing urban demand. So, till when do you see this trend sustaining? And what products of our portfolio basically cater to rural demand per se? So, so uh, rural matters to most part of the portfolio. It's obviously differential numbers across brands. So, you uh, can't in ICL are more than 30% coming from rural, and uh, the regular products like uh, Compliance, Sugar Free, and Navy have are in the range of 18 to 25 uh, as a part of rural. Nutrilite has much more rural component, though. So, overall, I think rural matters, and rural plays not just a role of direct consumption, it also plays out as a channel impact, also. Uh, because wholesale and all parts of other channels also get that much uh, more uh, uh, vibrant when the rural demand is good. So uh, for us, uh, while we may be a little lower than the uh, typical uh, average industry levels of rural, but uh, it does play a valuable role in building up our business. Right, okay. And what's the outlook for like, when do you see rural demand outpacing urban demand, if you can provide some insights? I, I don't have any specific number, but we are quite hopeful given the fact that monsoons have been good uh, and uh, inflation is in better control given the, what we went through. Uh, we do expect that uh, rural incomes will help, uh, uh, will get better and rural demand will continue to build up uh, because that's really impacted the overall consumption industry. Right. Okay. And last, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, lastly, I may have missed this, but uh, are there, have there been any new product launches in the last quarter, or is there anything launching in the next uh, in the next coming quarters, which which is something of uh, materiality? So, so maybe you missed it. We've launched uh, several new products uh, in the last uh, quarter, which we talked about: Complan, Immunogro, Heavy Use, Pink Play, and Charcoal. A uh, couple of products are neutralized and uh, nice and soap in the international market. We have four more products, like, like, like I explained in my you know, opening remarks, we have four more products planned over the next few quarters. So we are quite uh, you know, also on the new product launches. While some of them are uh, specific to channels and markets, but we are building on those as we go forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone now. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Avendis Park Institutional Equity. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Just a couple of follow-ups from my side. Uh, so this quarter was slightly tricky to understand the actual underlying consumer sentiment because it got muffled with the heat wave tailwind also. So, but if you remove those noise uh, from from the numbers, how do you see the consumer sentiment? Is it uh, are we better placed than we were, let's say, two quarters back? Yeah, that's what uh, I think. We better placed than earlier quarters uh, from a consumer sentiment, and some of our uh, products we, we thought uh, consumption has is looking more positive. But uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. Okay. And just second, uh, you spoke about some consultant engagement that we are doing. Uh, uh, if you can elaborate, what problem statement are we working on? So, so we've, we've got a strategy consultant who can work co-create with us to build uh, strength. And because we, we believe we are on the right path, we're, we're focusing on the brand building, category building. But uh, given the task we have, and we've discussed this earlier also, uh, we are market leaders in five of our brands, which means that we are not just fighting for market share, but category building. And therefore, uh, to add bandwidth and uh, uh, focus uh, even more strongly on the international market, if I add to that, 
we believe uh, we're adding uh, bandwidth and uh, you know more strength to our uh, actions and that's why we've got them uh, for to work and co-create with us this time for the next few quarters and so uh, all the cost pertaining to this has been booked in this quarter or there will be some follow up cost also no no this is a continued engagement it's not just one time engagement so it's not just to the strategy but uh, work with us on strategy co create and uh, co own with us with linkages to performance outcomes so sure. so so, so it should be continued and therefore if we do well uh, it helps them also so it works for everyone it's a win win that you try to work with them And, and and this is performance based or there is a large fixed component or performance based like i said okay okay and and last one for umesh for umesh any uh, guidance on tax rate and uh, uh, and and if you can call out the one off that you spoke about in employee cost uh, how should we kind of uh, build in, in coming quarters and for the year short sure, so uh, on the tax rate i have just uh, you know spread out that we will not be having any tax Cash outflow in 24, 25, and 25, 26. After that, will be uh, in a in a you know new tax regime. So that will be paying 25 plus salary, etc. Uh, as far as the employee uh, cost is concerned, I think uh, I uh, you know alluded earlier also that the one off on account of the PF transition to government PF that we are doing, and we also the occupancy that has been factored in now. Uh, but may say how should we build uh, rest of and if you can call out the number that was one off in this quarter that will help to normalize the number uh if i don't have it handy but i'll uh, maybe you know we can circle back on this perfect thanks thanks and all the best thank you thank you the next question is on the line of lokesh from bob capital markets please go ahead all right thank you for taking my question Uh, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first one is on the uh, on your uh, on your hedging policy, like how much, like what's your typical hedging period, and uh, how much are you covered for? We are not able to make it clearly. I think we are we are not able to make it clearly. Because we are not able to hear you clearly. Is it is it any better now? Yeah, yeah, yes, certainly. All right. uh so 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 we just a couple of questions first one is on uh, your margin so uh, what's your typical hedging period and uh, how much are you covered for fy25 for your uh, commodities and what percentage of your cogs do you actually hedge uh, just to understand like how much of the inflationary impact uh, is going to have on your margins in the current financial year Uh, that's the first one, and then the second one is obviously you uh, like the FMCG industry is relying on the uh, rural recovery uh, for a for a for an acceleration in the sales growth as we progress to FY25. I wanted to understand uh, your margin profile between rural and urban, uh, whether that's going to have like once your sales start becoming more skewed towards rural through the year, then. is that going to have an impact on your margins uh, if you could clarify it by gross level as well as the dollar level that be helpful so uh, let me just first address your first question which was on the hedging and uh, you know buying of commodities so first yes. of all we don't do long term hedge we we are a, we, we take a low to medium risk only on this where we have a line of sight on certain products which also allow for a certain uh, taking calls we do that otherwise we don't take uh, risk ourselves because our business is actually on brands uh, we just try to manage and balance our costs so our hedging is only to be more uh, should i say uh, medium term more short to medium term, term and uh, defensive rather than being very uh, aggressive in hedging so the overall direction of the commodities has been uh, helpful and uh, with a little bit of smarter buying reading understanding those better and wherever possible to hedge it's helped us and we continue to remain focused on that but we don't lose sight of the fact that our bigger value sits in building the brand so that's where we are doing and that's what is helping us improve our gross margins level 
if that answers your question or if there's something more to this uh, commodity. No, that's, that's actually helpful. So you're saying it's actually the mix that, that you're trying to improve that's impacting your gross margin set, what you're trying to imply? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. And uh, and so uh, just just clarifying, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, so you said you don't have for long term. So is three months like a good period to think of? Uh, yeah, because you have two months. Then, that's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. Two to three months. Yeah. Got it. Uh, okay, and that question on the Google. Mm -hmm. Did I? Yeah. So, uh, so rural, uh, like I have explained in the earlier question also, it ranges between 20 to 30 percent across most of the brands from a uh, consumption point of view. But uh, from a distribution, general trade distribution point of view, uh, you know, the rural and urban uh, splits are almost 50-50, out of 2.9 million or 3, uh, 3 million outlets that uh, we are available, our products are available in, it's 50-50 between urban and rural. So, obviously, rural plays an important role. Uh, but we are also seeing, uh, and and we are hopeful that it will continue to build. But we are also seeing a good traction in within the urban, which is beyond the general trade in e-commerce and non-trade. So we are not like only dependent upon rural, but we hope that we build up right and uh, help the overall uh, mix. And from a margin point of view, I think we are balanced across channels. Uh, we ensure because there are risks of channel conflicts, consumer conflicts. So we try to avoid any uh, margin uh, uh, differences across uh, uh, geographies or channels. Got it. And do you have any uh, any products that are like specifically meant for rural areas, like smaller packs or anything like that? Uh, so they, I guess, the price realization might be a bit better over there, and the gross margin. Sure. There. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshat Haria from Multiac PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good numbers. Uh, so uh, my question was more on the consultant uh, that we've appointed. So if I look at this year, this quarter's number, it works out to be around 2021 20, crores, which is around two and a half percentage of sales. And you know, as you uh, clarified with Tejas, um, this is more on a, you know, proportionate basis and it's uh, more recurring in nature so just wanted to understand overall you know whether there is any fixed element also involved to the consultant cost and what could be uh, you know this cost on an annual basis hello Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the chairperson seems to be have disconnected. Please hold for while we reconnect.
Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the chairperson has connected. We will begin the question and answer. Yes, Akshay, please go ahead. Yeah, so I'll just repeat my question. So my question is around the consultant that we've appointed. So uh, for this quarter, if we work out some rough numbers, the amount comes to around 20 crores, which is around 2.5% of current quarter sales. So just wanted to understand a few things uh, in terms of the nature of this agreement, uh, as you uh, you know confirmed with Tejas that this is more recurring in nature. So wanted to understand if there is also some fixed element which is involved. And uh, you know, for the full quarter, a uh, full year, what could be the cost overall involved on the consultant side, and what also what is the total periodicity for which we've appointed the consultant? Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Now you are connected. Yeah. So I'll close Lokesh's question, which was, uh, you know, cut in between, uh, which was uh, largely regarding approval uh, and uh, Lucas is in the line, so we can ask the question. Uh, so we can uh, address it. Or you want to take uh, Akshat's question first? Hello, Akshat. Please go ahead for your question. The management has disconnected. Now it's connected again. Yeah. So um, on the consultant cost, uh, for this quarter, it uh, comes to around 20 crores, which is around 2.5% of the quarter sales. So I uh, wanted to understand on a full year basis what this cost could be and also whether if there is any fixed element involved um, in this agreement with our consultant and the overall periodicity for which we've appointed this uh, particular consultant. Okay. So, so uh, there is uh, a longer period uh, engagement with the consultant. Uh, we can't, we're not sharing the exact numbers which uh, at this stage. And there is a clearly a performance linked engagement where there is a smaller portion for the fixed element and there is a larger portion for the uh, performance linked uh, uh, element on uh, consultant cost. Right. So this quarter, because we've called out the cost specifically, is it that it has been, uh, you know, slightly on the higher side for this particular quarter and going ahead, uh, it would be, um, you know, more streamlined with our, uh, you know, overall other expenses or uh, this run rate, we should expect it to continue. For no, no, it's quarter. not this run rate. It is also linked to the business performance and that's why we've uh, uh, accrued it accordingly. Understood, understood. So uh, it is, uh, we should link it more to sales. Uh, sales and bottom line both. So there is a multiple matrix that we are using on this. Uh, okay, understood. And uh, as you all already explained, this is for all the brands. So uh, any particular uh, brand, focused brand for which uh, this consultant is going to, you know, um, focus more of their effort or it is across brands for uh, domestic as well as international, it is equal focus. So so we this is the fact that, uh, as I have explained earlier, we are looking at a uh, growth across, uh, I mean, we are a leader at least in five of the categories. Uh, our task is not just market share or growth, but also growing the categories. Uh, we are looking at partnerships or co-creation where we can help build the categories uh, ahead and uh, uh, provide additional bandwidth to the team, which is already focused and doing a reasonably good job, but we could ensure that our sustainable uh, models are built around these groups, which could include both domestic and international and wherever the opportunities are. So it is pan business uh, approach. Right, right, understood. And as you uh, explained, uh, it is uh, not just based on a single metric, but it involves multiple metrics, which involves uh, profitability as well. Uh, it's more so important because the profitability is really uh, higher in the first and fourth quarter, while it is um, more on the tepid side in the second and third quarter. So, correct. Yeah. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lokesh from Bob Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for 
thanks for letting me come back in the queue. So this, uh, so yeah, I was just saying that, uh, uh, do you have uh, a different kind of product profile for your rural areas? Yeah. Uh, like I imagine if the, uh, if those are like small packs and they're more popular in the rural areas, then they might be slightly higher margin compared to uh, the urban areas. So, so uh, what we're doing is, and I think it's a, uh, uh, you know, the what consumers, uh, uh, are today buying from multiple channels and basis of where they are located and how they are buying. And therefore, the uh, regular channel is now uh, getting fragmented and there is rural consumer, urban consumers. There are also multiple sub-channels or retail environments, which could be chemists, cos uh, cosmetics, uh, grocers. There are, of course, e-commerce and market. So there are multiple uh, sub-channels and large channels within e-commerce, quick commerce and everything. Uh, and marketplaces. So we have, we are being constantly revisiting and improving our uh, pack price architecture to meet different consumer expectations or need states across uh, channels. Uh, typically, yes, it's a uh, it's a reality that uh, rural consumers, as is expected, do buy a lot of lower unit price packs. But uh, that's not the only way they are buying. So we have specific uh, products which are targeted at rural consumers, we have target, uh, specific pa uh, packs uh, which are targeted at e-commerce or uh, market consumers. And within that, we also prioritize sometimes uh, based on the opportunity between food or uh, chemist where we uh, focus or drive uh, certain packs because the consumption is more driven from these uh, sub-channels. Uh, largely, uh, you know, there are opportunities of increasing margin at each and every level, but it's not that there is one size fits all. So we balance uh, overall margins and uh, any of the specific packs which are going by channel, uh, if there is opportunity, we will obviously look at it. But uh, I can't have a very simple answer for this. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are doing whatever it takes to meet the consumer needs, given the way they buy across channels and sub-channels and geographies. Understood. All right, thanks, uh, thanks for clarifying. Thank you. As this was the last question, I will now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing remarks. Uh, thank you everyone for the time and attention. Uh, we, we've had a good quarter. We are hoping to build on this momentum for the remaining three quarters. We have a uh, set of launches and executions planned. Uh, uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll uh, see you in, in the next quarter results. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.